Okay. And we go to geometry, chapter 10. And, uh, let's see. okay. Well, let's have a prayer. Father God, we thank you for another session that we can study uh, science of mathematics, geometry. Again, these are reflection of your wisdom, your beauty, your orderliness. You are God of order and uh, um, holiness, God of mercy, God of love, and also God of order. And we, may we see your beauty as we study about geometry. And today also, Lord, uh, we pray for the uh, victims of this shooting in Florida, in that high school, for the families of those 17 kids that got killed. We pray for them that the Holy Spirit may comfort them, may through this tragedy, this terrible, terrible tragedy, the hearts and minds of people be turned toward the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray for the that young man, the troubled young man, that he did this. May he come and repent and come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray all these things for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Any question? Nathan? No? We're fine. So next week would be our last session. It's amazing how fast this, uh, <laughs> this mod went. All right, everybody. So please remember, next session, please uh, uh, send your um, uh, presentation, your PowerPoint presentation of different chapters that you choose from the book by James Nichol. Okay. Geometry. We have all kind of writings and shapes. You know, it's about points, lines, planes, and um, angles. Um, you know, we will talk about them more as we go through the course. What you will learn is how to identify and model points, lines, and planes, how to identify collinear and coplanar points and intersecting lines and planes in space. Uh, look. Now, what is a point? <laughs> point is a location represented by a capital letter or a small dot. Has no size, length, width, or thickness. Um, point is simply a location. Draw, draw it with a dot. As you can see in the PowerPoint, please follow the PowerPoint. Uh, name it with capital printed letter. You only have 26 choices. <laughs> um, okay. And it has no shape, no thickness, no width no or length therefore it has no dimension word symbols like point p uh, uh, now before we go to line something something separate not it's not in your textbook but something i thought you may like to know and uh, let me make sure this phone is okay um Something interesting just on the side. Years ago, when I was a math student, math and physics student, it was, I was reading a book. If you can find a copy of it, uh, I highly recommend that uh, small auto print book. I found a copy for myself called Poetry of Mathematics. And the reason I liked that book was it relates in a it's a short book, very short, book, short hardcover book. Relates mathematics to spiritual things and concept of God. And one of his, uh, no, again, this is not in your textbook. Just, just on the side. See these two lines, line A and B, A, B, and C. Okay? Okay, yes. Well, uh, can you tell me? Oh, yes. Hey, how are you? Glad to have you. Glad to have you in your own cup today. I'm alive. All right, thank you. Good. I'll be 
Uh, this is not in your textbook. This is something that is part of your functional geometry points and line. This is something years ago when uh, I was a math student. Uh, I find this book in the library of my university called Poetry of Mathematics. And it's a small book, if you can find it, I highly recommend it uh, because it relates uh, math to spiritual things. And one of the, one of the things that it has it's a short book and it has all kinds of diagram lines. He asks this question <coughs> Which line do we think of these two lines has more number of points? Ah, well, I can do it. A and B is the points A and B. I don't think it's the length. Okay, so you know, then let's say, let, let's say, you know, I mean, let's stop it here. Okay, they don't go in the thing. They stop it here. Each lines, each, which, which one of them has the more number of dots? Why do what, what, what you see as two and two? Two and two, they both have two within, within their line. What do you mean? They have, okay, there's two points. There's a point at A and there's a point at B. Okay. Which equals the two points measurement. And then there's a point at C and point at D, which is two, which equals the same amount of points. Or okay. Not necessarily distance, but points. Okay. Good. Yeah, yeah you got it. Now, basically, another way to prove it is if I draw a line from here, another one, and another one, and another one. For each point that I intersect on this line AB, there is a corresponding point on the line C. For every point, I can go forever and we can make it tinier and then tinier. And it's the same thing. The issue is because a dot point doesn't theoretically doesn't have any space. So we are talking about infinity. So that's why, even though when you look at it, most people would say line C has a more number of points, but in reality, are equal. And in that book, his argument then was he's seen of many things, but that we think of oh, because I can see and feel and I'm touch. You know, we were talking about your friend that he believes in science as God. Uh, you know, we think uh, that's all. You know, whatever I can see and feel and uh, analyze with my five senses, then that's it. But they can be misleading. The truth can be something else. We talk about Trinity for many people. Trinity, oh, we are talking about three gods. Oh, no, not necessarily. And I use this uh, example. You know, we are talking about. One and one and one, it's all <coughs> adds up to three. Uh, but change the operation, make it multiplication, adds up to one. <laughs> so it's a, it's, a, it's a question of how you look at it. Um, again, something else on the side. Um, if you guys have time, go on a steady. Uh, Two things. One is the nature of light. Now, this is more in physics, quantum physics. I was both a physics and math major, and I had a course on quantum physics. And the big issue about, and, and tr trust me, <laughs> I think I'm kind of crazy. Uh, but when I was studying the chapter in the course in the class on quantum physics, suddenly a light came in my mind, and I understood that well nature of the Lord Jesus Christ that is both God and man because scientists have uh, argued for uh, many many years centuries is light a wave or a particle it shows both characteristics <coughs> the characteristic of the wave the characteristic of the particle it had both in some situation as a wave nature in some situation as a particle nature and both dual nature what it's like and then so I was looking at Jesus is the light of the world, and he has well nature, God man. <laughs> yeah. And I think in quantum physics, if go do a research um, on in fact, 
I'm going to make that an extra credit. Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Have you ever heard about that? Heisenberg, Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Uh, have you heard? Have you heard about it? Many, many years ago. Yeah. Okay, this is class. That principle, which comes from quantum physics, not from any biblical course, in fact shows that human knowledge is limited. Man cannot know everything, no matter how advanced his uh, knowledge and his technology and his scientific. And this is an answer for your friend. No matter how advanced man becomes and how uh, more accurate and precise scientific tools he invents, there is a limit that he cannot pass. Just if you could. Define Heisenberg principle, and you know, actually I told you, but you can put it in your own words. Its application regarding human knowledge and revelation from God. Heisenberg, the search of Google. Heisenberg on certain principle. Can you write it? Can be a paragraph. Okay. Anyway, let's get back. Oops. 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 I heard my physics professor was laughing on him. He worked as a young man with Einstein. Really? Ah. Yeah, they were talking, he was talking about back then it was Star Trek was big and how you teleport. Ah. And how the realistics of teleporting is, is in our past, but they just don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, um, line a series of points that extends in two opposite directions without ends, like <laughs> what you see here on the screen, um, named using AB with that arrow with two pointers on each end, or line M. Then line is made of points, draw it with the arrow, okay? And as I said, there are tonight's session probably will be short, <laughs> very easy. Name it, um, you know, A and B um, with two points on the line, and then a lower case cursive letter, again, you have 26 choices. There is exactly one line through any two points. And that's why, because it's made of points, that's why that those two lines that I draw on the board, as far as the number of points are concerned, they're equal. Because they're, they both have infinite number of points. All right. Um, a line can be say line AB or line BA or cursive N AB or BA. Okay. Let me put those <laughs> arrows. All right. Collinear points are points that are that lie on the same line. They are on the same line. Um, collinear po points that lie on the same line, again, like, <laughs> uh, um, you know, A, C, B, but not D. Um, uh, D is not on the same line. D, is, D can be on the same line with, I mean, if I draw a line going through C and D, they, they would be collinear, but not with A and B. Okay? All right. Uh, are the three points collinear? If so, name uh, the line on which they lie. A, D, and E. Let's see, we have uh, point A, D, uh, where is E? Are they collinear, A, D, and E? No. B, C, D. B, C, D. Well, uh, no, because B is B, uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A, E, and C. Yes. You know, they've gone line M. Plane. It's a flat surface that has no thickness. It contains many lines and extends without end in the direction of all of its lines. It is a, it's named either by a single capital letter or by at least three non-collinear points. The page of a book resembles a plane, although it has, does not extend infinitely and has thickness also. Plane, we have flat surface made of points, right? Right with a shaded, slanted, four-sided figure. Name it. Okay. Let me put all of these. With three non-collinear points. This would be plane ABC or ACT or whatever combination and use a cap capital cursive letter, okay? There's exactly one plane through three non-collinear points. Okay, so the plane has a capital. Yeah, yeah, the, the B is the name of the plane, then you have the three points A, did I say, I'm sorry, if I said B is a point, no, B is a capital cursive, uh, we have the three non-collinear A, C, T, so it would be plain B or plain ACT or CAT, plain CAT. Coplanar points are points that are that lie on the same plane. Okay. Points and line that lie in the same planes are called as coplanars. Now, look at example two here. Name the, name, tell me, the plane represented by each of the surface of the box. What would you call the um, bottom plane? No, 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 look, look here. This plane, oh, and, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Or you can just name three of them. Okay. So you see that? How would you work this on the plane? The same way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, of course, you can see, for example, um, if you are talking about, uh, if I'm talking about the front one, would be N or plane H. Okay. But you have to look at it kind of, give it a depth. It's N R P I. Then the side would be D M N I. The top would be D N A N. Okay, so these are plane represented by the surface. So the bottom, the very bottom one would be plane. Is that I T R? I T R. Yeah. Because N, I think, is actually. You can assume it as a point, but you can, it, because I think it's used with, for the uh, front of that cubic shape. Uh, but don't worry about, you know, it will be clear in the quiz. Um, example two, name the plane represented uh, by each surface of the box. Um, so uh, let's see, the front. Yeah, yeah. It, you see, your eyes <laughs> kind of okay. plays with you because it can go back and forth. <laughs> but basically, look at the plane each side, and you all you have to do is just use three three of the letters, right? <laughs> Angles. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. Angles, right angle is 
one quarter of a completion of a rotation or 90 degree. Acute angle, less than 90 degree. Obtuse angle, more than 90 degree, but less than 180. Complementary angles, two angles where, whose measure have a sum of 90 degree. A straight angle, one half a complete rotation is 180. Supplementary angles, two angles whose measure have a sum of 180. Here you can see the picture. Uh, this is called the acute is less than a, uh, it is 45, less than a 90 degree. This one is obtuse, more than 90, but less than 180. This is a right angle, 90 degree. And notice how it's called A, B, C, A, B, C. This is a straight angle. Well, let's see. Half of the complete rotation, 180. This is a reflex angle. You know, it goes from, uh, actually, we are, we are talking about this part of the angle. Okay? I'm talking about like an elbow. Yeah, exactly. Complementary angles uh, are these two. If you add them together, you get the right angle. If you add two right angles together, you get a straight angle. All right. Parallel lines are lying that lie in the same plane and have no point in common. They do not intersect. If two different lines in the same planes are not parallel, they have a single point in common and are called intersecting lines. If the lines intersect at angle 90, they are called perpendiculars. If we intersect a pair of parallel lines with a third line, it, that third line is called transversal. Eight angles, angles are formed here. Uh, we have parallel lines with the transversal T. We have A and M and T cut both of them. And now you have eight angles. A thing to remember is Seven and six are equal. Five and eight are equal. Two and three are equal. One and four are equal. Six and two are equal. Okay. Seven, four, and eight, four be equal. I'm sorry? Eight, four, eight, four, and eight, four, eight. four and eight will be equal. Okay, so six. Yeah. The pair. Um, talks about exercise 538. Okay. Two parallel lines. Can you tell me what's about the value of angle three? Number three. Great solution. Yeah, what's its value? It's 112. Yes. Equal to that one. So this is 112. What's the value of seven? Hmm? You have that. Oh, 112. Right. So, number four is, and once you have that, what's the value of one? It's the opposite of four, so you want 12 with nine. No, no, no. That would be five. No. 
How much is this whole thing? Uh, one. one. So you just do the math. This much is 112. So it's 180 minus 112 is so, angle one is 68. So, number two is what? Number six. Number five. Easy. <laughs> All right. And then we have to triangles triangles have interior angles and exterior this what is the sum of the three angles of any triangles there's a sum 180 180 doesn't matter what kind of angle it always adds up to 180 this the triangles interior of a triangle but as you can see on the you know on the your powerpoint you have interior and exterior the sum of you know like a with its exterior would be what the sum of a plus its exterior what would be this plus this that's fine one eight so if you have one, you can find the other one. You have all kinds of triangles, you know, acute triangles, right triangles, has a, um, you know, right angle, 90 degree. Um, acute triangle, all angles measure less than 90, but when you add it up, it will be 180. Equilaterals, you know, you can read that yourself. Uh, you have similar triangles. Oops, before we put it. Let's look at example either one and two on page 541. One and two, page five. Okay, page 541. Uh, using angle relationship in the triangle, find the measure of angle A, triangle ABC. Okay, if this is one twenty degree and this is twenty. How much should be this end? One forty, and the sum should be what? One eighty. So this should be okay. Easy. All right. Let's look at example two. Then we give me the values. What would be the value of one? 
So this is the two example on page 541. Similar triangles, page 542, 543. <coughs> Similar triangles, um, it, you know, it means that the angles of the, the two triangles are equal. The size can be different, but the angles are equal. The size uh, are different in proportion. For example, the two triangles that we have. Say they are uh, they are similar triangle because their angles are equal. This one is equal to that, that is equal to that, equal to that, and the sides the sides of the sides are also proportional. We have six eight four inches six four eight. We have three three. Six, eight, and we have three, four, and two. Okay. This is double of that. This is double of that. This is double. Of that. All right. So when you have the sides are the same and the length of the sides are proportional. We call it similar triangle. Okay? So the proportion is the angles and the Yeah, angles are equal. The proportion are the size of the triangles.
example, there on example number three, you can see what time goal on the in the textbook. Uh, the bottom of the page figure 10.20. Uh, you have that figure. Side. If you want to find x, something about similar triangles is that, uh, for example, uh, the, the, the proportion of the single sides are equal to one another. In other words, uh, 5 over 8, so this side. Proportional to this side, and this side is proportional to this side because these two angles are what equal. Follow me. Okay. When the angles are equal, then it means that we can have the proportion of seven over x. to the 5 over 8. This sign is proportional to this sign. This sign uh, to this sign. So you can solve this uh, if you 5x equal to 56, 56, and then divide both sides by five. You can uh, put it by ten point five. So that would be the we'll just stop it for us. Yes. Just put the sides, you know, at eight over five. Because these two are equal, seven over five would be equal to x over eight. An angle, in other words, let me show you something else. This angle, if I want to find the value of this angle. Let's call it angle, for example, one. Angle one would be seven um, over five. Seven over five would be angle one. So that's the reason that you can do this. You can have to say seven over five. Would be same as uh, or seven over x would be the same as five over eight because this angle is the angle here would be x over eight. Okay, x over eight equals to seven over five. I mean, let me do this. Yeah, same thing. So, are you guys following me? Do you understand what I'm doing? Yeah. Okay. 
Find the length, the height, or the length of the lamppost. Uh, we know this guy's height is six feet. His this distance from his distance from the lamppost is ten feet. His shadow goes another four feet. How would you find that? What would you do? How would you find the length of the, the height of the lamppost? Again, uh, we draw right, a right triangle and they share an angle. You know, if this side is here, this is 90 degree, this is 90. Yes? Right. Okay. So, what we are doing, this thing is 14 feet. Okay. If I call this side X, the proportion of X over 6 is the same as 14 over 4. You call so you can't get the shadow. No, no, you need that for the smaller trunk. Okay. <coughs> and then you solve it for X, which is the point. Okay, for X. Pardon? I would almost forget the shadow. No, you need. You know, you make two triangles. That's what you're doing. Then we come to Pythagorean theorem. The sum of the square of the length of the legs of a right triangle is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse, as you can see in your PowerPoint. Um, uh, if we have a right triangle right here,
All right. Um, let's do maybe one example on page five. gives us a triangle, it says if B is 12, 12 feet, if H is 9 feet, uh, then we can solve it for A. H squared 9 to the power of 2 is equal to A squared plus B squared. A squared 12 to the power of 2 is at least 1 plus 4. And this is 81. Um, uh, no, I'm sorry, I put that. say the length is 122 inches the, I mean the, the, the length of the graph 122 inches the distance is 120 in other words this is 122 this is 120 it's the same thing as finding the, the rise uh, yeah, kind of. But we are using the Pythagorean theorem. It says if I call this H, call this B, would be H squared is equal to B squared plus X squared. Under 22 to the power of 2 would be under 20 to the power of 2 plus X squared, which then would be the mass. X squared would be 44. Or X would be a point two. So using that, you find 
the height of this statement the original height. And that actual construction is going to want to know <laughs> the person with the wheelchair that will determine the slope of the ramp. You guys following me? Okay. Uh, polygons, perimeters, and tessellations. Tessellations. Um, the relation between, we want to talk about the relationship between area and perimeters. Uh, shapes can have some same perimeter with different areas. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it's in your PowerPoint. For example, you have this uh, rectangle. Um, the perimeter would be the length of the side. So you add one plus one, two, 20 plus 20, 40. The perimeter is 42 units. But the, the area is one time 20 would be unit square. Can you see that? The area, you just add the sides together. One unit, two, 22, 42. Right. But the perimeter, the, I mean, the, the perimeter, the area would be one times two. Uh, here, what would be the perimeter of this stripe? And what would be its area? 22, 20, uh, 20 units square. Uh, this one, what would be uh, its perimeter? 24, and what would be its area? Shapes can have the same perimeter, but different areas. You see, this will have these three, actually the perimeter of all of them are the same, but the area are different. Or they can have the same area, but the perimeters are different. Okay, let's look at example one, page five. <coughs> Example one, the rectangular field. Uh, it has a length of 42 yards with a width of 28 yards. Fencing costs five dollars <coughs> twenty five cents per foot. Find your cost and close the field. Okay. So, if the fencing costs five dollars twenty-five per foot, so the cost is five point twenty-five dollar per. Um, we want to find out how much it will cost to fence the whole thing. Um, so, what would be the perimeter? The perimeter is this side. If you call this is L, let's call this H. The perimeter would be 2L plus 2H. Right? Yeah, that's two times. Okay. So, 2 times 28 plus 2 times. 42. Right, perimeter uh, will be under that 40 yards. Okay. Then 
they have to convert the yard to feet. Uh, one yard is three feet. One yard is three feet. Then one fourth yard is equal to no, no, sorry. Yes. Uh, one fourth yard is equal to You know, one yard is equal to three feet, so we cancel these things and we divide, we get three feet uh, per yard. So the answer would be 140. If one yard is three feet, 140 yard would be 140 times three, which gives you 520 feet. Yes? Oh, 420. Then you multiply it by 525. Yeah, that's so, uh, one yard is three feet. Uh, 140 yards is equal to 140 yards times three feet. So it gives us 143 feet. And multiply that by 420 feet times. One feet is equal to five point twenty five. Do the math, get twenty two point five. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Plus thanks. Yeah. Plus <laughs> thanks. <laughs> okay. Any question? Yes. Polygons. Any closed shape in a plane formed by three or more line segments that intersect only at their end point is called a polygon. Rectangle, square, hexagon, trapezoid, <coughs> triangle, you know. When they have four sides, they are called quadrilaterals, like trapezoid, uh, parallelograms, rectangle, square, rhombus. Oh, okay. Exercise 10.3. This is clear. This is definitely three. We can enable by such area. Um, let, me, but let me do the one next to it. For example, if you have an equilateral triangle and one side is six feet, what would be its perimeter? Equilateral. Uh, it's it's six. That would be slightly different. Um, Tell me how tall, what's the length of this side? Minus 30 minus 10. Oh, this side, yeah, minus 2. Because it's 17, right? 
which would be 15. Okay? Uh, so, uh, but if you have one integer sum, what did you get up here? You get a 5, a 9, If I want, if you want to find the area of this whole thing, what would you do? Basically, you have two, two. times two. So you have two times what? What? Two? Because that's guess that's fifteen thirty. Oh, you're going to get it. If this is true, what would be the sign? Like 14. So you've got 2 times 14. Okay. And what would be this area? So you're going to area the whole thing? Area, well, I need to find the area of this and that, then add that. What is this side? And then you just add them together. One, three. You just divide it into known geometric portion. <coughs> Tessellations, you know, basically is a flat surface is tilling of a plane using one or more geometric shape called tiles with no overlaps and no gaps. You, know, you see, like you can see this shape. So it's a tile covered with no overlaps, no gaps. They call that tessellations. <laughs> um, arrangement of shape closely fitted together, especially of polygons in a repeated pattern without gaps or overlap. In mathematics, tessellation can be generalized to higher dimension. What is tessellation? A repeating shape that covers surface without overlapping or gap. The word tessellation comes from the Latin word tessera, which means small stone cube. Okay. The earliest tessellations were found as mosaic picture on floors in old Roman buildings. <coughs> This metamorphosis, you know, <laughs> like here, you see moving from here to something else, moving from here to something else. Metamorphosis, changing the form. Repeated pattern. This is kind of different from the simple <coughs> tessellations because you don't have one pattern, you have multiple patterns, but they don't overlap and there's no gap. Okay? Um, you got to memorize some of these. I, I, I will give you the table, but I appreciate, you know, if you memorize them, like area of a triangle is base times the height divided by two, two parallelogram um, base times height, Rhombus, rectangle, square, circle. Uh, the area is pi times radius to the power of two. Circumference is two pi r or two pi diameter. All right. Let me just check something. What? Where are Let's look at example one, page five, five. <coughs> example one, page five, five, eight. You know, again, this is just like the one we did here. You know, you decide to cover the patch on the figure 10 point 37 with bricks. Find the area. It's a path with 
four breaks per day, we have square root. How many breaks are needed for the project? So again, how do you find the area in that picture? You have, you know, um, So I divide it into two rectangles. Okay, one will be this, the one will be this. Okay. Um, what would be the how will you find the area of this rectangle? You have three times one. Example two, page five, five to nine. Okay. What are the costs? We parted the rectangle below measuring 12 feet by 18. If the carpet is 1850 per square yard. So first they convert uh, both the measurement to yard or feet to yard. Uh, one yard is three feet. So basically. Examples. Yeah. When you go to the stores nowadays, it's just like you go and they're like, how much is it? Like, how do you figure it out? Yeah. So, yeah. Circle, circumference of circle is the, the, the number pi, 3.14 times the diameter or 
two times the radius, okay? Uh, area, uh, pi times the radius of square, all right? Um, we can look at example eight. Which one of the following is better by a large pizza with 16 inch diameter for $15 or medium pizza 18 inch diameter for $7.50? You guys tell me. A large pizza and it costs $15, its diameter is 16 inch. The medium pizza costs $7.50, the diameter is 8 inch. So we have to find the uh, this, the, the size, I mean the area. What's the area of a circle? Uh, well, it's it's a a circle pizza. Area is for a circle pi times uh, radius square. So, in, in one case, we have pi is mean time, uh, the radius of one is for the large pizza, 16, that for the medium is 18. Do the math, this one comes to 201 inches square. This one comes to 50 inches square. Now, the price of the first one is $15. This one costs 15. This one costs how do you find which one is a better deal? You would x to times two. Well, we want to find you got to find the price for each square inch. Of a larger pizza and for the medium pizza. If the total price is 50, the total size is 201, in order to find uh, uh, how much each inch of the square costs, so I have to divide $15 by 201. Yes? Are you guys following me? The total price for the larger pizza is fifteen dollars. The total area of the larger pizza is twenty-one inches square. So I have to, you know, if this this thing costs fifteen dollars, I divide the total cost by the area. I find what what it costs for each each inch of the square, and it's a zero you know, almost zero point zero seven. You do the same thing for the other one, 7.50 divided by 50 inches, and you get 0 0.15 dollar per inch of the square. Dollar per inch of the square. So it's more expensive for the medium. It's better to buy large. I mean, really, you're almost you're, half the price. That's interesting because you would you would just think by looking at the price that it would be a cheaper or better buy. Yeah. But you got to find the unit price. What we are doing here, we are finding the unit price. We find the area, we know the total price, 
get the total price divided by the total area, which is the unit price. So when you want to carpet your home or uh, put wood or carpet, what you're looking for, you always ask for the unit price, how much they charge per square feet. That's the thing that makes whether you get a good deal or not. Okay, then, you know, I, for this formula, if you could, again, please, as much as you can memorize it, but I will provide you with a table. Uh, oops, actually, we come to the last slide, some exercise on volume. Uh, Example one and two on page five sixty nine. All right. Solving the volume problem, you are about to begin a work on swimming pool in, a, in your own yard. The first step is to have a old dock that is ninety feet long, six feet wide, and six feet deep. You will use a truck that can carry 10 cubic yards of dirt and charge $12 per load. How much will it cost you to have all the dirt all the way? So, you begin by converting, first of all, again, things are in units, are in feet, but the cost is in, what is it? 90 feet, 60 feet, 60 feet, 12 per load. Oh, but, they charge it 12 per load, uh, but each load is 10 cubic yards. Okay, so first we convert, we have to convert uh, feet to yards. If it's 90 feet long, uh, one yard is 3 feet, one yard has 3 feet in it, and we have 90 feet to divide to get 30 yards. We do the same thing for the 60 feet and for the 6 feet deep. Are you guys following? Uh, okay, are you guys following? Did you, did you understand what I just said? Yes. Okay. So, first we convert. So we have uh, 90 feet, 60 feet, and 6 feet. And the rule is one yard is equal to three feet. So if I have 90 feet, I have to divide it by three, or by three, and by three. This becomes 30 uh, yards, this becomes 20 yards, and this becomes two yards. Just follow me. Okay. Then you want to find a volume. Basically, you have a rectangular solid shape. This is what you have uh, 90 feet long, 60 feet width, and then it's uh, uh, 6 feet uh, the depth. So, what you basically what this is what you have.
what you have. 90 feet long, you should be covered in 30 yards. Uh, 60 feet, I'm sorry, the total turn of line is 20 yards. Uh, the depth in this one is 2 yards, okay? My picture is not uh, that close. In order to find the volume of this shape, what do we do? 30 times 20 times the length times the width times the height. 30 times 20 times 2, which is 120. Uh, no. Says now that we find the number of now we find the number of loads that okay the uh, uh, it says we can, the truck can carry ten cubic yards each time we have hundred and twenty yards cubic so how many loads do you need ten per trip hundred twenty. Cubic yard by 10 cubic yard. These two times cancel, you get 120. I mean, 1,200 divided by 10, you get 120 loads. And for each load, it costs how much? $12. Just in 120. The value of geometry, it can be helpful in different ways. Um, surface area example seven, page 572. Surface area of the rectangle is solid in case 10.9. Once again, uh, simple. You have the all the three dimensions: the length, the width, and the height. You just multiply them by 10. It's uh, if it's in yard, they want it in the what is They want it in the small part. Let me show you here. Let it be. So this is five. So uh, five times eight is forty. Forty times So you multiply uh, five times eight times two, and then three times five times two, and eight times three times actually uh, four. No, times two. You, you, you follow the on the surface area. So if you look at that picture, so. Uh,
they want the surface that they want to get, but adding all the surface of the, this side. One, two, three, four, five, and six side. And they have the uh, five, eight, <coughs> nine, five, eight, and three. So, first of all, what would be the area of this side? Five times the eight. Five times the three. The ice plane tricks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The I, thought, I thought it was one times the width. Yeah, but look at oh, just, the, just that area. Look at this, this, this area. I mean, just that area. Only as a. Yeah. This is five. But then we have two of them. Okay. Then we <coughs> got this one. Where am I going? So what would be this area? Five times eight. We have then we have one. Then here comes the tricky. Uh, you have to think of this side, which would be three times eight. Are you do you see that the three and the eight? So three times eight. Then we have one here, you have one there, and we have times two. So you just multiply and add them all together to get 158 yards. But when it says surface area, not the volume, surface area, it wants the area of this side, area of that side, top, the bottom, this side, and the next. Okay. So I play trick. So surface area, they have that formula on page 572. Length times width plus length times width, length times height plus length times height, width times height plus width times height. Why do you do that? Because there are two of each. Or you can just multiply by two. So this is the formula for surface area. <coughs> Length times the width for this kind of solid rectangular shape. Then length times the width plus length times the width because they are cross. Then you have length times the height. This is the length, this is the height plus length times the height. So there is one here, one in the back. Then you have width uh, times the height, width times the height, plus width times the height, because you have 12. It's the same thing as I did, they just correct me twice, I said, that's my width twice. Well, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we are done. Any question? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is built upon the previous things that we learned. Any question? All right, then. What time is it? Yes. Time to go. <laughs> Time to go. All right, good. We finished early. All right, so I'm going to stop. So remember, next session you have your final and please uh, PowerPoint presentation. Just submit that. Oh, sure. Don't worry. That's okay. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Nice.
Sure. No problem. Uh, no, again, take it down. <laughs> Last hour. So, when, when is the final actually coming out? Uh, I will try my best to have it on Monday. 